Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the beautiful and extremely talented Dre, also known as Dre of the Dead on YouTube. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I am doing so well. I'm so glad that we were able to hook up today. Um, you know, now that you've had your adventure with your scorpion, um, <laughs> if you don't follow her on Instagram, I do have all her links down here in the description, and you will be able to hear all about scorpion stories. So, um, Today you found a scorpion in your house, correct? I did. I yeah, we found it in my my guy's office. It was just crawling around, uh, so we put a jar over it, and we found one before. But I, I'm cool with spiders. I'm cool with everything. I'm not cool with scorpions. So, <laughs> I'm in Michigan. We don't have scorpions. So if I seen one, I would probably run, cry, shit, and scream all at the same time. I mean, yeah, like that's what I wanted to do. So I don't. <laughs> <do anything. laughs> So um, a little bit about you before we get started. Um, she is a writer, sculptor, and YouTube creator that's intertwined her love of useless information and the macabre to create an ongoing video series called Fred Your Head, where she tells stories of strange but true things. Currently, she is also working towards creating the uh, line of horror-inspired designer toys. So like I said a little bit ago, and I'm going to say it again. Click the links here in the description. Follow on social media. Subscribe to her YouTube. Now, I'm very interested in the um, horror-inspired designer toys. Can you tell us anything about that yet, or is that still kind of um, un it's under wraps? It's sort of in wraps a little bit. Um, I am currently working on perhaps a, a brain damage sculpt, so um, kind of seeing where that's going. And then also I want to do like my own line of just my own creepy creatures and characters um so yeah and that's gonna be coming up soon yeah please keep us all updated because i would love to be able to get some of those and promote those i think that'd be so cool i love awesome. what you're doing i love what you were doing over at the channel i had a couple different people reach out to me like you need to get a hold of her you guys would have a great time so i'm so honored to finally be able to have you here this is so cool that we were able to work this out because our love of horror is something that we can all share and it makes us a family a conversation you and i had earlier the minute, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat. The minute you say Jason Voorhees, I hug you. You know, it is everything really, else goes up. Yeah, there. it's a universal yeah, language. It's, it's very interesting. It really is. And the horror community is all inclusive. And it's funny, I want to bring this up real quick, because by at the time this episode airs, Candyman will have already been released. And I'm hearing a whole lot of people bitching about the woke Candyman. And it's like, have you guys not seen the original? <laughs> like... <laughs> are you bitching just to bitch right now? Like the original movie is all about that. That's what it's all. Cabrini Green itself, the building, uh, it is, it's really annoying to me. So I, I, that's the reason I'm bringing that up is I kind of wanted to get your opinion on, um, I hate saying the wokeness, but with horror being ahead of the curve on so many political and social issues, mm -hmm. is that something that you enjoy when you're watching a horror movie or do you go into it strictly for the horror itself? I can enjoy a little bit of wokeness in horror movies. I loved Get Out. That was an amazing mm -hmm. movie. It was well done. The cinematography was great. Um, the storyline was great. Like, I'm okay with that, you know? Um, I, I don't mind it as long as the message is relevant to the story, really. See, and I agree with you. And that's what I love about, you, you brought up Get Out. You brought up, uh, and I'll bring up Tales from the Hood, yeah. Candyman, um, Night of the Living Dead. These are all movies that have a horror theme to them they have a message to them but they're a horror movie first they're a yeah. horror movie and they don't shove it down your throat they're not pushing it in your face they're a horror movie first with a message and i feel like we gotta smooth this over guys because horror has been doing this for a long time back in 1968 george romero made night of the living dead which had a black man saving a white woman yes. and people were blown away and all the social commentary that comes along with this has been going on since 1968, guys. There's no such thing as wokeness and horror. Horror has just been ahead of the curve in everything. The horror started the final girl. They started girls kicking guys' asses. I mean, yeah. horror has always been socially ahead of its curve. So we need to squash that as soon as we can because the bullshit about the new woke Candyman is absolute garbage. If you feel like the I new Candyman is agree. woke, go watch the original and then come exactly. back and talk to us. There's literally a scene in there where she says, black people die at Cabrini Green all the time, but a white woman gets attacked and the cops are there within five minutes. You know, like, that's what the story is about, man. Yes. So, I'm sorry to go off on a little 
<laughs> no, I love it. I'm totally on board with you. somebody earlier and my blood is still a little bit boiling from it. So you're kind of getting the aftermath of it. Um, I don't mind. <laughs> but the reason we are here today, love, is to talk about what got you started in the horror genre. We know what you got coming up in the future, working with the toys, which I'm very excited about. We need to keep in contact about that, please. All right. And we also know what you're doing now with uh, the Feed Your Head videos. But what I want to do now is I want to go back to the past and I want to talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And your first horror movie was? Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm assuming the new one with Rooney Mara? No, no absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to fill that out there every time. But I know we're talking this is God. Yes. And yes, my man, Robert England, Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I think it is the best horror movie ever created. I've been known as quoted as saying that if you take out the last five minutes of the blow up dial, getting sucked through the window in that dumb fucking <laughs> Freddy car, this is the perfect horror movie. So Dre, do you remember how old you were the first time you seen it? I was probably four or five years old. Man. And I bet right after you watched it, you wanted to go get on a white dress and jump rope and do the whole sing song right <laughs> not exactly i was pretty terrified actually <laughs> and it, it's funny because i'm super jealous um i'm very happy with my first horror movie my first horror movie was house from 1986 nice. that's and a classic to this day, yeah that's still my favorite horror movie that movie is probably one of my favorite movies of all time behind back to the future and um but the jealousy i have of you being able to watch nightmare on elm street because i feel like house is more like the marijuana it's like the gateway type of horror movie, but Nightmare on Elm Street is the, the fucking, it's the smack. Like you are yeah. going head first into yeah. it. So um, do you remember yeah. when you watched it with for the first time? I, okay. So I'm sure my, my grandparents had it on in the background and I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but I sure. was underneath their um, dining table and they didn't know I was watching it. And I was playing with dolls or something. And I happened to look up and I was kind of sneaking peeks, you know, like, oh, what is that? And seeing all these, all this blood and all these kills. <laughs> and so it was absolutely terrifying for me. And Freddie as a character was just like the biggest boogeyman I could have ever sure. conjured in my head. It was amazing. So. And it truly is. And I can just assume, you know, grandpa looking under the table going, Mrs. of the dead. Get your butt out of there. We're not watching this. <laughs> he knew. He, Grandpa knew already. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So um, so this is a movie that, and a lot of people don't, you know, grasp this concept, but Freddy Krueger is on screen for, I think, nine minutes in this whole movie. And that's because of budget and because the makeup and how different he looked every time you've seen him. That's why he's always in the dark or, you know, you don't see him very often. Yeah. But without having the villain on screen all that often, it still has many iconic scenes that affect us so much. So I want to know, which scene was it that affected you the most from Nightmare on Elm Street? It was Johnny Depp getting sucked into his bed and that eruption of blood was... Uh, like, nothing has been done like prior to that that was like that and nothing has been done after. It is just completely original and beautiful. It's such a beautiful kill. Obviously, at four years old, I couldn't appreciate it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but now I'm like looking at it. Wow. Like the, just the, the sheer physics of how they made that happen is amazing to me. Well, this movie is in my top three practical effect movies of all time. You got this. Um, one of my favorite scenes of all time with them pushing on the latex above the bed yes. and then coming back with Nancy. Um, you know, so many scenes in this movie are done practically. And this was really a low budget film. It doesn't look like it because of how well they did, but Damn, you are so lucky to have this be your first. I'm not going to stop thinking about that. Um, <laughs> so, Dre, when we talk about A Nightmare on Elm Street, let's say you and I are at the bar, we're having a beer, and for some reason, someone just walks up and is like, yo, Nightmare on Elm Street, what do you guys think of that movie? What's the first thing that pops in your head when you think of Nightmare on Elm Street? Strangely enough, night terrors in general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's and because it's... when I was... Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Um when I was a kid and, you know, probably before the age of five, I had like massive night terrors and I would dream of things that I had never seen. I haven't seen any horror movies before then. So I, I didn't know where they could come from or how my brain conjured these like weird monsters and creatures and things coming out of the television at me. So when I saw this movie, it was like an embodiment of what I had been dreaming about for so long. And yeah. I think that in a lot of ways, it kind of, once I, once I watched it again as a teenager, um, it kind of helped me overcome a lot of those fears, you know, and sort of wrangle the boogeyman as my own personal 
security guard. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and like you said, when you go from watching um, The Land Before Time to watching A Nightmare on Elm Street, that's <laughs> yeah. a drastic fucking difference in the mind of a child. <laughs> and for repeat viewers, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but I believe, and now again, I am no doctor. I am no psychologist by any stretch of the imagination. I'm the guy that did seventh grade three times. So my opinion may not be all that useful here. But I believe that if you watch horror movies at a young age and you have education to go along with it, it grounds you more in reality. You learn the difference between fantasy and reality as long as you have the education there. You can't put a kid in front of Freddy Krueger and be like, oh, there you go. You know, you have to have the education to go along with it. This is fake. Yeah. This is entertainment. And growing up in a video store myself, I had that. I had the education of my parents and my grandparents to tell me this is fake. This is real. This is not. I feel like that really grounded me more in reality and made me appreciate things more. A scream is full of shit. Horror movies don't create killers. Okay. Like no. I love scream, but bullshit. <laughs> um, so we talked about which scene affected you the most from a nightmare on Elm street. And now I want to take that in a little bit of a different direction. What would you say your favorite scene from nightmare is? <sighs> That's a hard one. I think uh, part of me wants to say the last kill be just because it's so ridiculous that, <laughs> that the mom Marge gets pulled in through the window and it's obviously like this terrible mannequin. So part of me feels that that's so novel. Um, but at the same time, I think, I think probably like the, the phone, the, the tongue coming out of the phone was like just something I remember viscerally. It pops up every time I see, like I hear this movie um, mentioned at all. That is definitely like an iconic image that just is plastered in my mind i'm your boyfriend now nancy oh, <laughs> love it like that, i agree with you like that it's funny because horror movies always have that one line that i always feel like i quoted as a kid um nightmare had i'm your boyfriend now nancy i said that all the time as a kid uh the dream warriors which growing up was my favorite nightmare on Elm street movie that's my you know, welcome to prime time bitch like i yes. said that i'd be playing a video game i'd get to the last boss like welcome to prime time bitch you know like <laughs> um, you know a friday the 13th i'd always be like you're going to camp blood ain't you you know like <laughs> things. And it's just so cool that when we talk about these things the reason i like to talk about our first horror movie and these moments it transports us back to that time in our life and you have that nostalgic feeling i can't tell you what the first science fiction movie i watched what the first comedy i watched i don't fucking know but yeah. i can tell you house was my first horror because that's how much it means to us horror means so much to us we're willing to go out and buy these clothes and dress up like these people look and speaking of nightmare three right there one of the most <laughs> devastating deaths of all time in that movie um but we don't you don't see rom-com con you don't see people dressing up like Ryan Gosling and going and hanging out at a convention center saying, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. You don't get that. <laughs> but with horror, that's how important this is to us. And I'd love to know how it started for you guys. And while we're on the subject of being dark, kills is something that we always look for in a horror film. All horror fans, we love kills. We love ingenuity in the kills. And this movie does not have a slow burn when it comes to kills. Not many kills, but each one is super fucking memorable. We already talked about the Johnny Depp one. But what would you say your favorite kill from this movie is? I think Glenn is probably my favorite kill. That's It's just mm -hmm. such a good kill. It's actually my favorite kill, like, among most movies. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so memorable. I love it so much. And there's so many interesting facts about it. The fact that, like, you know, two of the crew members got electrocuted during that scene because of all the blood and everything. And, like, yeah. just the slight slant. Like, they had, a, like, a misalignment with the room. And, like, so all that blood going, like, at an angle, it's just... I don't know. <laughs> it's it's and, just it's true to my near and dear to my heart. And just seeing how much blood Johnny Depp had in his body makes me appreciate the fact that he can walk around as freely as he does because <laughs> damn that boy's full of blood. Right? <laughs> so now I am going to go scream on you here for a second, love. All we right. talked about which movie was your first horror movie, being Nightmare on Elm Street. What an amazing first movie. But like I said, Billy Loomis, what's your favorite scary movie? What is your favorite horror movie of all time? My favorite horror movie, and I'm probably going to get flack for this because it's more modern, but The Ring is probably my favorite horror movie. Mm -hmm. And that's just because I'm a big fan of psychological horror. Um, sure. And just anything that can scare me without all the jump scares really like mm -hmm. get into my brain. And then I walk away from the movie and I'm still like thinking about it and worrying about it. Like, I really, really like how it can kind of seep into your psyche. Yeah. And I do want to bring this up real quick. Two things about The Ring. One, 
anybody that gives you shit for that can kiss my ass because that movie <laughs> is it's in my top uh, three favorite PG thirteen horror movies. All right, and that sweet. bridges me into what I'm about to say. That movie's fucking PG thirteen, and it's yeah. scary as shit. Yeah, like, and you talk about the jump. You have the one jump scare, and you know I saw her face. <laughs> And they open the closet, you know? <laughs> but you're right. A lot of this is just genuine fear. And I think in probably one of my top 10 most scared I've ever been during a movie is yeah. the twist in this movie. When Rachel goes home to her son and she's like, don't worry, baby, I stopped it. We let her out. And he's like, we let her out. You shouldn't have let her out, Rachel. She, she never sleeps. And his nose starts bleeding. Oh my God, I got a little emo goosebumps right I know, now. I have goosebumps you know, like, too. <laughs> like that gets me e even when i watch it to this day and unfortunately i know you are much younger than i am but a lot of the younger generation i don't think they'll appreciate the ring as much because vhs doesn't exist you know yeah. so the idea of this scary killer videotape is kind of a a null idea now you know it's void like it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore um but damn man and another thing i love about the ring i'm sorry to go off on this tangent how many of us showed somebody the ring for the first time and then afterwards called their phone and said <laughs> you know, like, we all did that Come i feel on. like i've done that to multiple people actually <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love it i love the fact you said the ring because the ring um really opened my eyes to japanese horror and you know at the time obviously there was no google where you could just go and look this stuff up but to see the ring and then the impact that made with the grudge and all these other japanese yeah. horror those movies are scary. When you have a little kid to me, that's scary as hell. So I'm very happy you said The Ring. And again, anybody that gives you shit for The Ring, I'll push them in a well. Um, <laughs> so we, we, I've had a blast with you, Dre, but we always end this with the same question. We got to go back to Night Brown Elm Street now. And we're going to rank this movie on a skull count. Now, I want to preface this, this. We're not being critics. We're not judging it on score, acting, production, directing, even though all are amazing. We are strictly judging this on what this movie means to you and how much this movie affected you. So okay. zero being the worst, five skulls being the best, and you can use half and quarter skulls. What would your ranking of A Nightmare on Elm Street be? I'm going to go five. I mean... All the way five. All the way five. It just, mm -hmm. it's, it affected my life, like, just very much. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go five. I know my buddy gets sick of hearing me tell this story, but I got to. Like, A Nightmare on Elm Street affected him so bad. After he watched it for the first time, he didn't sleep with sheets on his bed for like seven years because of oh the Jason Garcia, the rod scene with the sheets yeah. in the prison. Like because of that, he didn't sleep with sheets on his bed. Like, oh my God. that's another thing we, we talk about. Like you and I, we watch our first horror movie. We fall in love with horror, but there are some people that watch it. And they're like, fuck this. It's like a roller coaster. I don't want to ever do that again. Cause there's a chance I get stuck at the top, you know, like, and I, I love and appreciate the fact that you fell so much in love with horror that you're dedicating a huge part of your life. And we're at the end of the show now, so I want to remind everybody again, I have all her links down here in the description. She's busting her ass. She's got a lot of great things coming up that we're all in the horror community so damn excited about. So please make sure that you're clicking these links down here, subscribing to her YouTube channel, and following her on social media. I promise you will not regret it. Um, don't go anywhere, though. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody sure. else, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.